Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Let's get right into this week's video. All right, this is part four of the welding cart project, and here's a little quick sketch with some some basic dimensions on there. I'm gonna get a drawing posted up uh, before this is all said and done, so that you can download a PDF. Anybody that's interested in building one, you know, just like this. But last week we left off here, pretty much framing the whole thing up and getting it all welded out. And there's the finished product. It's got a place for two bottles on the back. It's all decked out with aluminum tread plate, and then it's got those cable reels on the side, which you know look a little bit funky. I may actually wind up cutting some tread plate for those and uh, screwing screwing it on there too just for looks. But I doubt it. It's plenty functional and it looks okay. Right here I'm TIG welding this with silicon bronze or should I say TIG brazing. And when you're TIG brazing you you, you kind of want to keep the arc over the over the puddle. Don't step out too far and make, melt base metal. So I'm keeping rod in there pretty often. And that's what that looks like. And so I just TIG welded this with, like I said, silicon bronze because it doesn't require a lot of strength and it's easy and sometimes it's just kind of fun to mess around with silicon bronze. Both ends of these, uh, I've got two pieces of two inch wide bar stock here that are just butted up that I'm welding these pieces of four inch tubing to. And both ends of that will actually be welded to the frame itself, so that'll hold everything together plenty good. So I just need some pretty good sized tacks to hold uh, to hold the cable reels up, and it'll it'll be plenty strong enough for holding the weight of, you know, a TIG torch or a ground clamp or whatever I decide to wrap on there. Anyway, that's that. Now it's time to put together the the aluminum part that's going to screw on there and I'm using two inch bar stock for that just eighth inch thick 3.2 millimeter thick and I cut it up with the bandsaw and I'm just putting it all together like this and then I'm gonna cut the radiuses on the ends I just kinda of made this up as I went along it's kinda of obvious that that's what happened but this is what I had on the shelf without having to go buy uh, any anything special and I may actually wind up I may wind up cutting some pieces of that aluminum tread plate that I have left over and uh, and fastening them to the outside just uh, you know just to match the shelves sort of but it's plenty functional with just just as is so getting tack welds here with this plate right dead against that nice clean steel table is, is, is really easy helps trap the argon when you have backing like that on a corner when you're welding or tack welding on the edge of something to have some kind of backing there helps uh, prevent that venturi effect from uh, argon flowing over an edge so we're just welding up all these little butt joints here. You can look at the tip of that electrode. All I did for electrode preparation on these things is just put a blunt taper on it with a uh, cheap, cheap diamond wheel and then just weld it. I didn't round it using the uh, AC balance or on a piece of copper or anything. I just fired up. And when you have a nice, uh, even a blunt taper like that, that's, that's tapered to a, uh, a sharp tip, It'll ball, it'll, it'll ball by itself, but it'll, it won't ball before you get a nice crisp start at low amperage on an edge. So that's why I prefer this to balling the electrode. When you ball an electrode, it welds nice, but at low amperages, that arc wanders all over the place. Here, even when I taper down really low, you've got a stable arc. So filling that gap in was nothing. I'm using a, a few different techniques here on this uh, on these aluminum joints. Here I'm just kind of adding rod about once a second and moving the torch ahead about an eighth of an inch and pausing, kind of watching the puddle sink and then filling it back in with rod. And it'll look something like that. And this next one though, I'm going to experiment a little bit with kind of, I'll preheat it just a little bit by hanging around there and then I'll get moving and add rod about twice a second. Just kind of tap the rod in there as I keep the torch moving steady and that actually wound up making about the best looking weld of the bunch I'm just like I said I'm just doing some experimentation here with different techniques each line each ripple in the puddle is a freeze line so there's a lot more of them because I added rod much more frequently well, now it's time to mark some radius places on here to make the cuts using a set of dividers and then we'll cut it real quick using the little uh, portal porta band stand and now it's time to fasten it to the steel tubing pieces there that I used the silicon bronze on earlier. So we'll drill some, kind of match drill some holes in here and get about four screws using those, uh, those self-drilling 
stainless screws. Put a little countersink in there and using countersink head screws, they uh, go together fairly quickly. And that's about that. So that brings us to the, the finished product pretty much. The only thing left to show and talk about is the, the assembly on the back that's going to hold two bottles. So I put together all those little joints in, uh, in the next video and uh, got a place to put a chain and everything to hold two cylinders because I want to have a helium and argon on here. So when I get to that point, I will show how they're wide together with check valves and, and etc. and how to do that. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time.